Mary Finch's house had the power to generate vivid nightmares in the guest's dreams. Tom Collins fell asleep very soon. His soul left his body and wandered around the corridors, trying to open different doors. Tom thought at least one entry in his dreams might take him back to the real world. However, he couldn't open any door upstairs. So, he went down. He found a pale light in the kitchen and walked towards it. What he saw made him feel terrorized. Miss Finch's butler was cooking Frove's head. Hello, Mr. Collins. It's too early to be awake, isn't it? The butler said. What are you doing? Tom shouted out. I'm cooking breakfast for you and your friends, sir. Tom screamed. But that's one of my friend's heads. Yes, it has a great smell for a delicious meal, isn't it? I feel I'm vomiting. Tom answered and tried to open the kitchen door connected to a yard. However, the door was locked. I want to go out, mister, I don't know your name, said Tom in a low voice. My name is Jameson, Mr. Collins. Jameson was a ghastly, tall, and imposing man in a black suit with a stern expression that made him seem almost sinister. Jameson didn't stop to do his work while talking to Tom. Either see him eye to eye at any moment. You can't go out until the day breaks. There are vermin outside, and they can harm you, sir. I suggest you taste my dish. Your friend's head had succulent dark eyes. Tom exclaimed, Oh, no, no, no. The butler took one eye from the boiling pot and crunched it with his sharp teeth. Jameson's smiling mouth was dripping blood. He shared the other frove's eyes with Tom, but he screamed and woke up in bed. Tom watched the clock. It was three in the morning. After realizing everything was a bad dream, Tom Collins fell asleep. Once again, his soul left his body. He started to wander around the house corridors and finally discovered the butler cooking Frove's head. Tom got unconscious when Jameson offered him again the Frove's cooked eye. Then, he woke up from his horrible dream. The clock marked three in the morning, and he slept once more. A few minutes later, Tom's soul abandoned his body and went back to wandering around Mary French's house. He was unaware of living in a time loop until, for the thirteenth time, he watched the clock that had not moved from three in the morning. He wanted to keep himself awake until dawn, but there was no morning for a long time. Then, suddenly, he fell asleep again, and the nightmare began once more. While trying to turn up with an idea to leave the house to stop dreaming, Tom listened to the cure's lullaby far, far away, but sang, for it's much too late to get away or turn on the light, the Spider-Man is having you for dinner tonight. Tom began to cry like a baby. If he couldn't wake up to the real world, he would keep trapped between the butler's kitchen and the endless night, with no chance to contact his friends sleeping in the other rooms. What would you have done in Tom's place?